So in today's video, I'm going to be doing an editing tutorial. I'm going to be using my most recent video as an example. My editing style is inspired off of many YouTubers such as C-Day, Quackity, and Fearless. I'll be going over some of the things that they include in their videos. I have the timestamps of all the things in the description if you guys would like to check them out. Without wasting any more time, let's get into the tutorial. So as we can see already in the beginning of this video here, there's a zoom effect. So if we take a look right here in my effect controls, you can see all the keyframes involved in making the small effect. I wanted to go over this effect here because I wanted to tell everyone about the easing that's involved in this that makes it look so much smoother than just linear movements. So I'm going to use this picture to demonstrate the difference between the linear movements and the easing. So if we just click this little stopwatch right here, and we move this over a little bit, and then we just move the position of the picture. And if we click this little arrow right here, you can see that it's just like a linear animation. It just looks kind of plain. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to highlight both of the keyframes. And to do the easing, you want to right click and then you're going to go in here. I usually use ease in. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but I just use ease in. So I'm just going to use it for the sake of this video. And as you can see, it sort of gives it a little curve here. So what I do is I grab this little handle right here and I just drag it over a little bit and you can see that that's rising right there. And so what that does, it just changes the speed of the animation. So if I play it right now, you can see it looks much smoother than just the linear animation. So even though I only did it with positioning right here, the same rules apply to scale, rotation, and all that fun stuff. So if we take a look back over here in the beginning of the video, you can see that I keyframed positioning, scaling, and rotation. You can see that I did the easing, and if we play this video right here, right, so you can see that it looks pretty smooth. And then again in the beginning, you can also see that there are some subtitles here. Right, so subtitles are one of the most simple things you can do, but they're also the most time consuming. And the reason for that is because each word is one keyframe. So if we just look right here, you can see that there's two keyframes here just because there's two words in this clip. Since I have the keyframes enabled here in the source text, every change to the style of the text will be keyframed. So I'm going to create a new text thing all the way over here. So if we just write bruh here. If I just click source text, I just click the stopwatch. So now every change to the style of the text is going to be a keyframe. And um, for example, so I'm going to highlight all this just so it knows that I'm trying to edit this text right here. And then I'm just going to change it to just, uh, let's just change it to red, play this out. You can see that it changed once it hit that second keyframe there. I'm just going to delete that here. And for subtitling, for example, if you have audio and you're trying to subtitle someone talking, what you're going to want to do is line up where they say the word, and then you're going to highlight all this, and then you're just going to change it. You have to type it all out, and then here we go. Play it out, and then boom. And then so if we look all the way back over in the beginning of the video here, you can see that I have two keyframes here for both of the words. Right, so... So the next effect I want to go over is my shake effects. So my shake effect here is part of an external plugin called Sapphire. I was sent it by someone, so I don't really know how to get it, but you could probably look up how to get it. So in Sapphire, there are so many effects that you can use for your videos. So if you don't have Sapphire, I know that there are definitely other ways that you can do a shake effect, but this is the way that I do it. So we're going to be looking at S underscore shake here. This is what I use for my shake effects, and I'll show you some of the settings that I use. For my main amplitude and frequency here, I have 0.5 and my frequency is two. And then what I also add here is a tilt shake. And then my tilt rand amp right here is 18. And my tilt rand frequency is 19.6. My tilt wave amp is just zero. Tilt wave frequency is 0.5. And my tilt phase is just zero. So once you have all those plugged in, you'll probably have a shake effect that looks just like this. Right. Agency. Shake effects are pretty simple. If you just have that effect right there, you can just copy and paste it onto other stuff. So you don't really have to type all that in every single time. So what I want to go over next is audio distortion. So many YouTubers use like bass boosting and then sometimes they just make words sound funny, sort of like this. I was watching Shrek. And to do this effect right here, I use something called Flanger. It's included in Premiere Pro. And there's a custom setup here. I can show you guys my settings. And then so my initial delay time is 9.77. Final delay time is 17.84. Stereo phasing is 360. My feedback is 39.2. 
and then my modulation rate is 5.597. And then finally down here, it's 0.357 beats. And then for mode, I have special effects checked. And for my mix, I have it at 100% wet. So next effect I want to go over, I'm actually going to copy this right here. I'm going to bring it all the way over here where my other examples were. So if you go over here in your effects menu, you're going to want to type in distortion. And then we're actually going to scroll down all the way over here. And then we're going to use this audio effect right here called distortion. And then so with distortion, what you can do, you can click edit right here for the custom setup. So what distortion does is if you grab this green line right here, and then move that red line up to match that green line. And if we play the video, watching Shrek, it's sort of bass boosted. It's just loud. That's what I use sometimes for bass boosting. I know that there are some other tutorials. I don't really know how to do it that well myself, but what I usually do is use this distortion. So the next thing I'm going to go over is motion tracking. Oh, I see it, I see it. So as you can see, when I'm playing this clip, you can see how the video is sort of following the umbrella. And so that effect is actually pretty easy. So basically all it is is just keyframing position. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to press down this button right here to add or remove a keyframe. And in this case, we're going to be adding it. What you're going to want to do is go over to your arrow keys and press the right one five times. And then so from there, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to position it to make sure whatever you're following is in the middle again. And then just repeat that process. Just move over five times. And then reposition, move over five times, reposition. And then once you do that, you'll have something that looks like this. Oh, I see it, I see it. You're just laying on the so the last thing we're going to be focusing on is my outro here. So in Premiere, they have an effect called Ultra Key. It's pretty much just a chroma key, which helps you out with green screen. So if you see that this part is all green right here, this is part of my outro. If you drag Ultra Key onto it, and if you go over to Key Color right here, press this eyedropper tool and click on the color. Once you turn that effect back on, it will show everything that is not that color that you have selected. <laughs> yeah, hold on. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please smash like and maybe even subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'll be there to answer any questions you guys have. Anyways, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys all in my next one. Bye.